Hello. Welcome to tonight's bedtime story by Lucid Tales. I hope your day has been kind and full of softness. But whether it has been dancing dappled light or blazing desert sun for you, it's time to relax now. Find somewhere comfortable, whether a feather bed or a sleeping bag, and make sure you're ready for sleep. Gently rotate your wrists and ankles if you can, and feel the freedom in your joints, the little loosening that means it's time for bed. Tonight's story is of the wren and how she came to be the king of the birds. We all know the robin. Robin the red-breasted, Robin the valiant, Robin the territorial, Robin the Christmas King. Well, it was not always so. Once, back in the mists of time, the Robin was known as the King of Summer, perched in his oak tree. And quite a different bird was the Winter King, that lurked among the holly leaves and bright red berries. Once upon a time, it was the Wren. In times long past, in the darkest heart of the depths of winter, on the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice, wren boys would gather outside towns and villages, armed with heavy staves and crowing pride and cawing laughter. They would scour the hedgerows around their home, beating the evergreen leaves and bare twigs, searching for the king of winter. When at last the small brown bird launched herself from the brush, startled by the boys' raucous laughter and probing staves, they would lash out with their sticks and try to catch her with them, for the boy who flushed the wren from her hiding place and broke her back with his stick would become the king of the day. He would place the tiny body on a bier atop a pole, hung with ribbons and parade with the other wren boys back toward the village with the frost still crusting the ground. As they entered the town, the wren boys would shout riotously and laugh at the cold, singing and celebrating and rousing the other villagers. At every house they would stop and sing of their triumph over the wren, how they had killed the little bird for the robin, and at every house would be presented with tankards of steaming hot ale or cider, and gift a bloody feather in return. Once every house was visited, the boys would wend their way to the churchyard, their cheering song becoming a dirge, and dig a tiny grave to bury the little body in. A strange tradition, for in those times the wren was considered sacred. A blessed bird, God's chicken, the red-tinged bringer of fire and flame and the king of all the birds. To kill a wren at any other time, on any other day, was to bring down lightning and death upon your hearth and home. Once upon a time, many millennia before ever the wren boys ventured forth with stave and stick into the frosty morning, there was a competition. A great and mighty contest, held to decide who should be the king of all the birds, for the birds, my dears, were a silly lot who felt they needed a king. And yet they had none. And so it was that a test was devised. Whichever bird could fly the highest toward the sun would be crowned king of all the birds, and so they took off. The ostriches and penguins pouted, left out. The chicken flapped hard and bobbed up to the treetops before faltering and coming to roost. The skylark rose up like an arrow, straight into the air, fluttering and singing until the highest he could breathe. The goose on her strong wings launched forth and plateaued among the clouds. Even the albatross, that solitary philosopher, soared high. But up there, far above them all, lifted on mighty pinions, rose the great eagle. He soared on updrafts higher and higher, past skylark and goose and albatross, up past the clouds and above into the thin, clear sunlight and higher still. At last, it stood clear that the eagle was the only bird that could fly to such a great height and survive. Surely he would be king. But wait. There, nestled in the soft feathers of the eagle's back, 
so small that he noticed neither weight nor warmth, hid the wren. And as the eagle reached the pinnacle of his great flight, she launched herself off his back and flew higher still, and the heat from the sun scorched her brown feathers to a reddish hue. Even the eagle could not deny it. He had been outwitted, and the wren had flown higher. And so it was that the tiny, humble wren, that crafty and flitting dweller of dark places and high spaces, became the king of the birds, then and ever after. Good night. Sleep well. And I will see you tomorrow for another bedtime story.